This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of Los Angeles. He goes by the name Jessamy. Mr. Jessamy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Great. Thanks for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure. No worries. Um, yeah, you have an interesting story. Uh, your, your management team sent me some information, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're going to get into all of that. Um, but for those who don't know Jessamy, tell us about yourself. Um, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, to um, amazing parents, amazing family. Um, my father was in the music industry before I was alive. And um, he's a professional at what he does. He's a professional bassist and uh, tourist and all of the above, a songwriter. So I was always engulfed with the music and um, I decided to take it seriously about junior year of high school. And um, with being in LA and having sort of a preconception of how things work at an early age, I got exposed to a lot of that early on. And so it protected me from a lot of, um, a lot of dangers that anyone can just get into. And um, I really just wanted to use my, my God-given gift to um, figure out what I was here for in this life, you know, to be honest. And um, it's really just uh, everything I love and everything that I see myself doing. So, um, you know, being an African-American and a mixed race African-American with white and with Native American, um, I think I have a, a voice to use and a responsibility as well. And so um, I'm just now getting comfortable in, um, in pursuing that. And so um, I'm excited to share it with the world. Okay. Um, yeah. So you. So we're going to talk about your your latest music. So uh, you come from a family of, you know, uh, musicians, and um, I understand your great uncle is the rock and roll legend Chuck Berry. Um, right. So was music like you said? Music was always something that you wanted to do. Ever since I can remember, man, yeah. Even the earliest video I have of me is my parents filmed me on a VHS and I was handing them vinyls. Uh, obviously I couldn't read, but you know, I was handing them vinyl records and I would grab whatever I could and just bang on it. And um, that's literally the earliest memory. And my parents used to throw these things called berry jams at our house. Um, when you're in the music industry, you have a bunch of industry friends, as you know, I'm sure. And so all the baddest musicians from LA would come over and just jam. Like, I think it was once a month. And wow. so it was kind of given, it was just all around me. I was like a little sponge absorbing everything. Um, and so again, it's like all I know, you know, obviously I have education and all that other stuff, but it's all I really love, you know, so. Okay. Who do you, um, I know your uncle and I believe your dad is a musician as well. Yeah. Um, who did you, um, did you, outside of your parents or your family, I should say, what other artists did you look up to uh, growing up? Wow. So growing up, like Michael, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, um, Timberlake, because of the Justified record that Pharrell and Timbaland produced, um, Jamiroquai, I, uh, very diverse. Um, my dad also played a lot of rock records too. Led Zeppelin, my favorite band was Chili Peppers when I was in fourth grade, I was a drummer. Um, still am, but I remember just listening to all types of different music and figuring out like, like, wow, this is 
it's not just about one style you're into. I can take from each genre and really enjoy it. So, man, D'Angelo, another big one. Like, I really owe all my musical credit in history to my father for putting me onto those artists. Artists. Okay. Uh, great. Um, so let's get into a little bit more about your music. Now, mm. uh, I understand that you've released, um, I think, five uh, singles this year. Yeah. Um, but when was your first um, release? Was it 2015 or? Wow. Yeah. Like 2015. <laughs> yep. Okay. Are you a um, are you an independent artist or are you signed to a label? I am. I've been independent my whole career. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the new music that you have coming out, um, mm. we were talking before we uh, went online. Um, you have an EP that's coming out soon. Um, you know, maybe end of this month, beginning of next month, somewhere around there. Um, but let's talk about your your the five releases that you released already this year. Um, those were actually all done records, finished records. Um, they, they were literally sitting on my computer in this archive of music that I have. And my manager hit me one day and was like, I think it's a great idea to release music once a week during the COVID and the quarantine. Um, I know you're a little bit down because we had a lot of performances, like a lot. Um, so I came into 2020 hyped, man. I had a whole plan. I had this artist I had really looked up to and I still do, a legend that I was gonna get in the studio with and work. And I had a tour lined up, somewhat of a tour. And so that new it was just devastating, man. And as much as we needed it, looking back, and it was the biggest blessing, man, I got to slow down and really um, put my attention where it needed to be. It was just hard. And so she was like, why don't you just drop a record? You know, these are sitting in your computer and why not just share it with the world? So I was like, you know, that's a good idea. And um, I'm glad I did because each one was different from the regular music I would put out, which is more R&B and soul. Um, and this was more up-tempo dance, um, feel good, vibey music. And so it was good to see um, people's reaction to that, that type of stuff because it, it not only for me did it, it let people know I'm versatile, but I really just enjoy music. I'm not a, uh, a genre type of guy. You know, I really listen to it at all. Okay. I'm assuming you probably picked up some new fans as well since um, it's mm -hmm. totally different from the stuff you were used to doing. Right, right. Uh, yeah, um, 2020 has been, um, man, um, mm. for an artist, it's... <laughs> you kind of kind of stuck guy, um, but yeah, I mean, but you know, everything kind of happens for a reason. It's just how you how you adjust to it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, maybe it could be a blessing in disguise. Maybe you know, um, somewhere down the line, it helps you somehow. Not sure. I don't even think maybe. I think for sure it was yeah. a blessing in okay. disguise. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I read somewhere. I think it's in your bio that. Um, you have a new project that you're working on mm -hmm. um, as a, um, uh, I don't want to say dedication, but um, as a motivating factor or maybe a tribute to uh, what we're going through with uh, Corona? Um, more so than Corona, um, just about what's happening now as a country and um, as the bigger problem is in America, the racial injustice and and what it's been like for me growing up as a mixed uh, gender kid, you know? I literally was uh, too white for the black kids and too black for the white kids and then had to find out like, okay, I can only act this way around this group and if I act this way, they're gonna kind of not say anything but kind of treat me differently. And so it was very confusing. Um, and it made me question like, who I was as a young kid, like, what am I supposed to, you know, am I am I supposed to be in skateboarding and in biking and stuff, or am I supposed to be playing basketball, listening to rap music, and you know, really, that was my yeah. my fight, and so just the struggle of that alone, just to let people know that you're not the only one, and yes, there are these um, these blueprints on our systematic system that's just not set up for people like us to thrive. And um, just making it a reality, really being honest and um, vulnerable about what's going on and my views on things. And more importantly, the things I've taken from my favorite artists and the albums that I've listened to, I really 
listen to what they're saying and it's just it leaves you feeling like oh man i can relate to that i'm not the only one or you know he went through that just like i did i got my heart broken i lost a, i lost a kid and wow you know maybe someone else needs that record you know yeah most definitely um so um i'm assuming all you know you were you said you were struggling with that as a as a youngster how did um I guess confidence help, but how does how does one get through that mm. uh, without you know turning to drugs or going crazy or something like that? Right. Well, God willing, man. Again, it goes back to the music. I was always very adamant about pursuing music, and I just had it in my blood. Um, so I was very good at anything I picked up, whether it was dabbling in piano or guitar. But drums was my my main hobby. You know, my dad got me like a little toy kit when I was like. I don't know, maybe four or five, but I got my real kit. Um, I want to say fifth or sixth grade for Christmas, man. And that changed my life. Just sitting there for hours every night, literally every night and drumming along to my favorite records. And I, I never took a lesson. I just wanted to learn and just see if I could do what they were doing. So I'll put headphones on, put the fan up, get all sweaty and just play, no matter how bad I was at the beginning, you know, but um, that was the greatest thing. It saved me from getting into drugs and stuff like that. But then on the other side, on the flip side, I can only isolate so long. So like I said, with the whole, you're not white enough, you're not black enough. I also picked up skateboarding. And so that was something I, I really got good at just because of the people I was hanging out with. You know, I grew up in, um, in a very white community, just to be honest. And I had a lot of white friends and a couple, uh, couple brothers out there, but like, I got really good at skateboarding. So you get your, from how good you were and the kind of person you were and just being a nice loving person I never really had hate you know I grew up in a loving family and um, I think really just staying true to me I think it was a blessing that I was good at all these things so you kind of gain this level of popularity if you will um, just for being good at things you know so really the arts and crafts and the things I put my energy into I was always good at so I think that helps figure out oh it's not about race it's about what you can offer you know okay now um you said your dad was a, a musician as well what instrument did he play did he play the he drums played, too, or? he was the, plays the bass, bass. he's the best bassist i know actually okay what yeah. type of advice uh has he given you about the uh, music business <laughs> Well, most importantly, to have a foundation, a strong foundation. So we talked about this last time he was over here, actually. He was like, you know, when I first told him, like, after high school, like, what do you, he was like, what do you want to pursue? You know, you got the skateboarding, you got basketball, you've got music. He's like, if it's music and you want to go to music school, you got to take this seriously um, because there's a lot of bad dudes out there. And I mean, being bad as in like, you know, good at what they do. You know? right, so, right. And on the flip side, a lot of bad people in the industry. So it's like, you got to take it seriously, but you got to have that team that you trust, um, whether it's your group of friends that you produce with or write with or your management or your manager. He set me up with a publishing that he already had called Barry Jam. And so I was able to get my own publishing through songs I wrote and um, just started registering stuff and really taking it seriously. Um, I went to music college and learned all the business from that but his only advice to me was just to stay true to who i am first and foremost um and really have a strong strong foundation just be completely vulnerable and honest you know? okay um what uh do you produce um you work with other producers or do you produce your own stuff i produce almost all my own stuff um i do work with other producers um and only if, you know, and I, I hate to say only, but like I really, I'm really adamant about my art and what I put out. So if I do work with another producer, it's because I look up to them and I really trust them with the sound and where we're gonna go. And it's more of a collaborative thing. I'll never just take a beat from someone and just sing on it, you know? It's like, we'll go in and dissect it, do surgery and you know, all that stuff. So, but yeah, I produce all my own stuff and um, I've used Logic my whole career. So shout out to Logic, <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay. Um, now let's let's talk about. Um, we're going to pause and play a snippet of um, Better mm. Man. Yeah. Um, that's wow. coming out 
I think you said soon. So uh, let's get into that. And we're going to play a snippet of that. This is Jessamy with Better Man on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. And enjoy. We'll continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. All right, Jessamy, we're back. Um, yeah, I can't wait to hear the rest of the song. Uh, so thanks for sharing that snippet with me. Yeah. Um, no problem. I'm assuming that you are on all the uh, social media sites too, right? Yep. All that. Everything. All right. um, is that the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, I'm always on Instagram, to be honest. Like, Instagram is just the easiest way. I, I tweet every once in a while. You know, I'm not really on TikTok or anything like that. I am, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. To be honest. Okay. And earlier we talked about the... Um, the effects of COVID-19 having on your your plans for 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, was the idea, I think you said that your manager mentioned, well, let's just release a, sing- a single. Um, so kind of keep you in the flow. Do you plan on doing any, uh, I know people are doing like IG Live now or any other instrument to uh, promote your music since we're going through this COVID-19 thing? Um, I've really dedicated after I dropped five weeks worth of singles, because I really dedicated all my time to finishing up this EP, just because I'm producing it all. And um, there's a lot of live instrumentation. I played the drums on a lot of records. I produced all of them, and I had my musicians on this one, like my band of musicians play. So all of my time has really been there. Not to say I haven't been working on other things, you know, aesthetically and visually, but like. My focus is really on making this record only because it's my my first body of music going out to the world and I really want to make a, a lasting impact. Okay. Kind of like what Voodoo did with D'Angelo, you know, like, um, you know, not to overpromise <laughs> what, what it's going to do, but like that's the kind of lasting impact I want to have in my career. Okay. Um, speaking of D'Angelo, are there any um, producers or artists that um, Mm. at your your dream list or your dream team what artists producers, would you mind working with yeah man like producers I would love to just get in with Pharrell for like a, a while um, we would make some crazy stuff it's just undeniable um, other than Pharrell man maybe Timbaland uh, Quincy Jones Babyface we would make some crazy music uh Honestly, Q-Tip. Okay. Not, not a lot of people know what Q-Tip has done, but um, yeah, man. All right. Um, so you said earlier that you're an independent artist. Um, do you plan or do you, or, or do you desire to sign with a major label or you just want to stay independent? I've always told myself whatever makes sense, you know, if... Uh, if you're walking on the freeway and a car passes you and they're like, you want to ride to your home? And you're like, okay, I can probably get there faster, but I can also get there on my own. It's like, whatever road you want to take. Um, there is interest right now from a major label who I can't really speak about, but uh, it's definitely um, a blessing and we're working stuff out. So if it happens, then it happens. If not, I'm still going to do my thing. But um, I think it really just depends on what you're trying to do as an artist uh there's a different platform with the label and not that i'm against labels or anything i just am pro independent just because you control everything and again if you can work stuff out within your label deal that you have creative control and that you want to produce your own music then amen like just work it out it's all about negotiation and giving and taking so i'm not against it um and hopefully this this thing works out so okay um, getting back to your EP that's coming um, soon, is it almost completed? Is it done? You're just waiting to drop it, or it's I'll about eighty percent done. Eighty percent. How many songs? Can you tell us how many songs uh, will be on there? Yeah, I think five or six. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking five, but um, 
maybe like a bonus track or something, you know? Okay. Um, now, is that different than the the ones you already released this year, or this is completely yeah, five yeah. new? All seven? brand new. All yeah. brand new. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's great. I can't wait to uh, to hear that. Keep us posted on um, when yeah. that comes. Um, Anything else you want to share with us today, Jessamy? Man, you have an interesting story. Um, um, I think, man, just to inspire people who watch this and just know that, um, you know, anything is possible, really, man. Like, I've seen it all. I think, especially someone like you, who I'm sure you've seen it all, too. Um, my dad claims he's seen it all. People, people the, the, the older you get and the more wise you become I think you really start to see a common theme of like damn you never you never get surprised you just like you know you might think you've seen it all then this happens and you're like wow man this is crazy so again I'm in that time of my life right now where I'm like this is really going on like and it's very inspiring man it's been hard to really stay inspired from home during all of this going on but you have to find ways, whether it's shooting around or um, watching documentaries or phone calls are important, FaceTime calls and taking walks with the girlfriend and just sharing, being vulnerable, man. I think for me, I couldn't be happier right now with where I'm at because I'm honest with myself and um, I don't expect perfect. I know that I'm not perfect and that I make mistakes and that I've made some mistakes in the past. But as long as you know you're giving it your best and that you're getting better, I think that's the greatest thing we can do as human beings, you know, uh, looking looking for a higher purpose, you know, that's what the EP really, really talks about, looking for the higher purpose while we're here within this, this life span. Okay, wise words indeed, uh, I'm Jesse. I didn't ask you earlier, do you have any siblings that are in the music business or just you? Yeah, my, uh, my sister actually just made it on to America's Got Talent. She oh. made it past the first round. And so I'm excited for her, man. She's a killer singer, like amazing. Like Tori Kelly, Ariana Grande vibe. Wow. So okay. hopefully, yeah, man. So like, hopefully that, that kick starts her career and I, I couldn't be more happy for her, you know? And it, it does kind of suck that this whole COVID thing's going on. So I'm sure the performances are going to be from home. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but I'm just proud that she's pursuing that, you know? Cause she was iffy for a little bit, um, but now she's going in full fred, you know, so. Okay. Maybe you two are going to collaborate down, down yeah. the line? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. um, now, I know you got the social media stuff, uh, Jessamy. Uh, you have a website as well? Yeah. Uh, Jessamy.com. J-E-S-S-A-M-E. -S 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 -E. And then Jessamy Berry across the board. B-E-R-R-Y, like the fruits, on also social media. Okay. And we'll have links on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. And we'll also put links on the description uh, notes on this interview on our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. Uh, one final question, Jesse. I know um, we talked earlier about your great uncle being uh, Chuck Berry. Yeah. What do you think you've taken from him, if anything? Yeah, I'm going to be honest, man. Like, first time my... My father told me that Chuck Berry was in our lineage, was at Johnny Rockets, and we had saw the jukebox, and he was like, look right there, and it was Johnny Be Good, one of his greatest songs, if not his greatest song, or most famous, I should say. And um, I put the quarter in, I started listening, and I was just like, man, like, this is crazy. Then he went on to tell me that he was the originator of rock and roll, basically. Um, and he, there's arguments between, you know, who was the true innovator of rock and roll? Was it Little Richard or was it Chuck Berry? I think both is my answer. I think Little Richard did it on the piano, Chuck Berry did it on the guitar. And so studying his career and just um, the stories you'll hear are the greatest, man. Like just how firm he was and just like, he didn't take no, I don't know if I can cuss, he didn't take anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, he was serious about his business. Um, okay. Would take cash at all his gigs and if, if his drummer missed a hit or his guitarist missed a hit. He wasn't nervous to let them know, you know? And so I took that from him and just how serious this, uh, this needs to be taken, but more importantly, just how innovative you have to be. Um, not being afraid of what people think of you. Um, really just like doing what you do, man. Like he laid, laid the foundation for 
the future of rock and roll, which turned to a uh, majority of a white race, gendered, uh, urban, like, genre. And so, you know, people claim Elvis stole his whole catalog from Chuck and, you know, whatever. Like, he influenced more importantly. And um, if that's what he could do, then that's what he did. So, again, man, I still, I still look up to him a lot. I've never met him. He um, would have been amazing to me. But um, it's crazy to think that that comes from my lineage just because it's, uh, it's one of those things where you just know it's all in the blood again, you know? It's really just like undeniable. All right. Have you, um, have you seen the movie Cadillac Records? I have, yeah. I actually fell asleep halfway. Um, okay. But there's another great movie called uh, Hail Rock and Roll, I believe. That's about Chuck Berry. Hail Rock and Roll. Okay, I gotta look yeah. that up. You gotta check that out. It's dope. Okay. Yeah, I, I um, when I seen Cadillac Records, I didn't know how much of it was um, truism. Oh. Or if it was just Hollywood, but I'm sure both. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was a mix. Yeah. Um, where he used to sleep in his car instead of going to a hotel room and. It was uh, interesting stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, check that out. Um, and be on the lookout for Jessamy, his new release. Uh, coming soon. Yeah. Thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. All right. Jessamy, thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast today, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. All right. Take care. Peace. All right. That's Jessamy on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Jessamy. You can find out more about Jessamy on his website at jessamy.com. That's J-E-S-S-A-M-E dot com. Don't forget to check out our profile of Jessamy on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. That's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.